Hi guys, welcome to Pete Waterman's Leamington Spa. This hopefully is the second in what will be a series of short videos designed to highlight specific areas of the layout working in a clockwise direction. So video number one was Hatton Bank, which uh, some of you have seen already. Hatton Bank's just over there and I'll show you that again just now. And today I want to just concentrate a little bit on what I refer to as Leamington approaches. This is the uh, approach to both the Leamington Avenue and the General Stations uh, from the north heading south. Um, so whilst I remember, if there's anything that any of you guys see in either this video or previous videos that you'd like to have a look at again, it could be a piece of scenery, uh, it could be some infrastructure modelling, uh, or it could be some locos that you want to see running or you'd like to see in more detail, a piece of rolling stock, anything like that, please let me know uh, via the contact page on the website or leave um, uh, something in the comment section uh, on the YouTube channel and uh, I'll make it happen. Okay, so anything else you want to know about the layout, just let me know. Um, anybody that wants to come and visit, please put a request in via the website and um, I'll sort it with uh, Pete and uh, make sure that it happens for you. Okay. So the part of the layout that you're looking at at the moment is uh, if you're heading south this is now going to go underneath the road bridge um, through the top yard uh, and enter the station throat it'll either be uh, the avenue station or it'll be the general station um, if you're going north i.e. back that way uh, that will take you on to uh, Hatton Bank and I'll show you that again uh, in a moment I'll also give you some idea of how the um, interlocking point work and signalling operates as well in order to uh, set the route before you can run uh, any trains. One interesting feature of this particular part of the layout is um, a piece of the back scene. All of the back scene has been painted uh, with the exception of one panel by a guy called Mike Raithby uh, who's a member of the um, Manchester Model Railway Club and it is quite brilliant frankly. One bit that impresses me, and I'll just move the camera very slightly so that you get a better idea of it, is where the 3D, i.e. Uh, model trees, blend in with the 2D, i.e. the painted background. All of this is hand-painted, and if I zoom in here, you'll get some idea of what I mean. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, the transition is, is, is almost imperceptible from certain distances, but it, uh, it really does show what... Uh, what can be achieved and uh, it is quite brilliant and as we go round the light in a clockwise direction as I mentioned earlier I'll show you the different back scene uh, elements that have been painted by Mike so again whilst I remember um, we've done Hatton Bank next will be Leamington Approaches and then it will be the station both Avenue and uh, General then it will be the Town Centre which is what's currently being worked on at the moment that includes the um, the iconic Girder Bridge uh, which is still in existence today. From there we'll go to the uh, locomotive shed and coaling stage, uh, round to storage sidings and then we will go the other side onto what is now the West Coast Main Line which is uh, Brinklow uh, and I'll show you that as well. Um, so there'll be a series of about six or seven videos, possibly more depending on what content uh, becomes available and um, I'll take you through all of those. So our loco is coming up from Hatton Bank going underneath the road bridge as you can see there I've just chosen uh, an 08 at random where it emerges into the top yard and onto Leamington approaches so you can see as I pan out with this shot it's actually a vast area of both uh, storage sidings and through lines to both what is our, as I said, the West Coast Main Line that goes down to uh, Brinklow and also the approaches to both um, the General and Avenue stations. Uh, all of the scenery, as I said, has been painted by Mike Raithby with the exception of one panel. All of the embankments uh, incorporate the teddy bear fur that you probably heard uh, Pete and others um, eulogize about quite regularly. This is bought um, online. It's used genuinely for uh, covering teddy bears, believe it or not. But because of the vast expanse of um, blue foam which is used to make these embankments uh, and cuttings, um, 
the use of static grass at the time would have been just impractical. Uh, so the teddy bear fur is uh, cut roughly to the shape you desire. Uh, it's then trimmed with scissors, um, clipped with hair clippers, um, and then you have to don your marigolds, I'm afraid. And we use a, a water-based colour called bramble, uh, where the, uh, the trimmed fur is covered in this uh, water-based paint, then it's left to dry. Once it's dried thoroughly, which usually takes about 24 hours, uh, it's singed then with a blowtorch uh, to the desired grass length and then you can start to add the details of either flowers, weeds, foliage, etc, etc. In fact, if I pan across to that area there, you can see where the use of uh, rubberized horsehair for hedging as well as other foliage creates an absolutely superb effect and blends perfectly in with the back scene. Um, obviously with the onset of uh, more modern um, and more efficient static grass applicators uh, Nock being the one that uh, we use here, uh, which is a German product, I believe. Um, the effects can be further enhanced. In fact, if I just move the camera slightly and show you this section here where we have uh, a wooden-built uh, sleeper buffer stop there, which is a Poppy's Wood Tech product. So, shout out to Poppy's Wood Tech. Uh, it's been built and, or constructed rather, and, and weathered here. Uh, it's a nice addition, what I call one of the little gems. Uh, you can see there that the use of static grass on a redundant siding, uh, albeit it's yet to be weathered, the grass that is, not the buffer stop, uh, it does uh, have a tremendous effect. The beauty of this knock applicator is that it, with no effort whatsoever, gets the grass to stand on end. I've personally used the ones which look a little bit like a tea strain, and I must admit I struggled with it, to be perfectly honest with you, but... Uh, those were the only ones that were available back in the day, so hence the reason the use of teddy bear fur has been, uh, has been so prolific on this layout. Not only that, of course, but the amount of static grass that would need to be used would have been just too prohibitive. So, currently the top yard is a home for Mogul 6336, as well as Pannier 7702. I'll just zoom in on that for you a little bit. That one there, and also a small Hudswell D2504. I'm only showing this one because it's mine, so I might as well. Um, and there's some interesting rolling stock actually, and again, I'll show you that now. I've just move the video camera, um, and that is the Crocodile L, which is, um, I believe, and I stand to be corrected by more, more uh, knowledgeable people than I, but I believe that the Great Western actually produced two of these in reality um, at Swindon and as you can see it's a it's a beast uh, it's got four six wheel bogies and they're designed to transport uh, items such as you see uh, modelled here which is a transformer there are two toads either end for a P-Way gang, there's two there and there are also two at the other end and I'm not entirely sure who built this model but I do know that it was scratch built and it is quite spectacular. It doesn't get run very often so if you want to see it run just let me know and um, I'll get it whizzing round. So other than that we have quite a selection of, um, of rolling stock as you can see behind the Crocodile L we have some um, bulk powder um, wagons. Uh, these are from just like the real thing kits. We've got two which haven't been weathered, which are the two you see in front of you that I'm zooming into now. And coupled to the rear of those are two which have been weathered, which uh, I don't know about what you guys think. Please let me know. I think look much better. I can't remember seeing anything like that that was ever clean, unless it was X Works, of course. Uh, not only that, we have a selection of uh, selection of rolling stock that you can see in front of you which I will pan around forgive my camera work it's not the best but it will get better I can assure you so again and these these are rarely moved they, they just stay here therefore um, for the purposes of storage really more than anything else and if I move the camera back slightly you can see coupled to the front of the Hudswell is a rake of um, shell oil tank wagons. 
these I believe are either Dapol or um, A and other. Could be Lionheart, not sure. I think they're Dapol. Uh, but they reside there permanently. So if I move the camera forward again, get you some idea of, and it's, this is what does it for me. And I, you know, please tell me if I'm, if it doesn't do it for you, you want to see something else. But the little things like the details here, where you've got the um, the sleeper built fencing as a, a retainer to the, to the embankment, which leads up to the two bridges. There are two bridges. There's the the road bridge that goes over. Uh, the approach to Leamington General and you've got the the other bridge over there which is the one that is the uh, Midland line which goes into Leamington Avenue but the use of the static grass on top of uh, the teddy bear fur grass which is illustrated here produces an absolutely superb effect I know Chris Lyth uh, one of Pete's oldest friends um, doesn't come up as often as, as he would like I think but he's here recently and he he brings the knot grass applicator and as you can see it's it's fantastic and the road surface as well um, little things like that which make all the difference I believe so if I pan around you see now if I pan out you can see the expanse of Leamington approaches so from here where it emerges from under the road bridge to where it enters the station throat just next to the goods shed which is further down there is probably an area of about 20 feet maybe slightly more than that um, and it's, it's just an impressive section of the layout um, and the little details like the speed restriction signs those have been created on the uh, 3D Systems digital SLA machine once the CAD drawings have been done uh, for those of you that look up um, actual images from layouts to get inspiration and to use as reference you'll see these are um, exact replicas and exact copies um, of those those items there's one at the south end of the station as well or the south southern the northern approach if you like which is at the other end of the station um, these have been um, put together and painted by uh, Dave Burns and Arthur McGee, two regular visitors, uh, on a Sunday. So as I said, all of the signals are uh, interlocked. Um, I'm not going to mess about with those today because it means I've got to walk, I don't know, about 40 or 50 feet to the signal box to get them changed. I'm not going to do that, so maybe we'll do that at a later date uh, and do a video purely on signalling and uh, and point work but little bit of bits and pieces again um, and again you'll forgive me moving the camera around but it's it's easy if I just do it this way things like debris and clutter um, between the the storage sidings some old sleepers clumped together there and it's little things like that which I think are often overlooked uh, in layouts but uh, works well here now bearing in mind that this layout was started in 2003 and it's still not completed um, even the fire devil there underneath the water tower it's great just adds that little bit of detail a little bit of realism um, which I think is absolutely essential on a layout this size it's probably worth pointing out that this is a modeler's layout um, although we do have running days uh, when visitors um, can either bring their own locos if they've got anything in O gauge or they can see any of the resident locos running but on any given Sunday there will be um, some modelling activity taking place of one sort or another. As I mentioned earlier, at the moment all of the efforts are going into recreating the town centre. Um, and it's, it's well underway now. It's a, it's a, it's a real labour of love. But uh, when I show that in detail on another video you'll see uh, precisely why the effort has gone into it. And the results um, that have been achieved, which are, are quite stunning frankly. And all of that work has been done. Uh, in-house. I'll just show a picture, in fact what I'll do now is I'll turn this off and I'll go over the other side and I'll film from the other side to give you some idea of what it looks like. So this has actually been handheld at the moment but it gives you some idea of the scale of this particular element of the layout. The track work which is all been hand built and if I span out I'll just walk along behind this back scene. 
give you a view. Just over the top, there's our black liveried 08. And I'll just scan around. And there we have it, Leamington Approaches going on into the station, which we shall feature in another video. So, guys, I hope you found this small video informative. Um, apologies for the video work. Uh, I'm not used to it, but uh, it will improve, I can assure you. So, as I said, if there's anything you'd like to see running, or you'd like to see something in more detail, um, be it scenery, modelling, locos, rolling stock, anything at all, uh, please put a request in via the website. Please leave comments um, on the YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you can get notified of any updates. Okay? Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.